Hey everyone, welcome back to Oztober on iHeart Movies. My name is Jonathan North, and today we're talking about one of the dumbest things that the Oz franchise has ever spawned. It's so dumb that it probably shouldn't even be counted as an Oz movie, but it was inspired by The Wizard of Oz. It's actually featured on the Oz wiki, and I do like discovering obscure movies, but yikes, this movie was something else. This movie is just called Flying Monkeys, and if I weren't doing this series, I would have shut this mess off after five minutes. As it was, I ended up watching it double speed to get it over with faster, and also in sections in between tasks over the course of two nights at work, so I didn't have to watch this train wreck all at once, and I guess since I was doing it at work, I kind of got paid for it, so that helped make it worth it. But then that did draw out the experience, so <laughs> pros versus cons, I guess. So for those of you who have never heard of this movie, and consider yourselves lucky, this is supposed to be a horror movie based on the minions of the Wicked Witch of the West in the first book in the Oz series. Normally, this kind of movie is definitely not up my alley. I am not a horror fan. I generally don't purposely watch bad movies for fun, and I prefer my adaptations to be at least somewhat recognizable as their source material. But when I found out there was a horror movie made for the Sci-Fi Channel based on the Flying Monkeys from The Wizard of Oz, I decided, what the heck, I might as well watch this train wreck because if I didn't, I would forever be curious. <laughs> so at least now I can say that I've satisfied my curiosity, for whatever that's worth. Anyway, since you're probably here to at the very least find out what this movie is about, beyond the obvious, <laughs> I suppose I'll get into it. As you might guess, there is nothing groundbreaking about the plot. It's not even remotely scary, at least to me. Don't let your kids watch this mess. Kids get scared of toilets and irregularly shaped Muppets. So this incredibly fake looking, terrible CGI demon monkey massacre would probably send them to therapy until their 20s. And when I say terrible CGI, I mean terrible CGI. The monkey monsters looked like they were basically the CGI equivalent of some kind of a rubber monster from a terrible 1960s Japanese monster movie. This terrible television film is a purposely bad horror movie from the Sci-Fi Channel. The same people who made such enduring classics as Lava Lantula, Chupacabra vs. the Alamo, Christmas Ice Tastrophe, and Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. None of which I've seen, I just did a quick Wikipedia search and picked out a few of the most ludicrously titled films. And this is kind of weird to me, because not everything that sci-fi makes is bad. They actually made another Oz adaptation that I'll be reviewing in a couple episodes, and it looked miles better than this one. Even the flying monkeys in that one looked at least competently made. They may not have looked completely real, but at least they had hair, and looked like they could maybe exist. These were just basically digital play-doh so anyway the explanation that this movie tries to give for the existence of flying monkeys is that there's some kind of chinese monkey demon which is apparently based on a real myth sort of but not really like i looked it up on wikipedia and the names of these sort of not really real chinese mythical creatures is spelled x-i-a-o and I am absolutely not an authority on the proper Chinese pronunciation, but whatever the name of the creature is, in this movie it seemed to vary in pronunciation from, like, Sego to Sigo, depending on who was speaking, but the acting in those exposition scenes was some of the worst in the movie, and all the acting in this movie was awful. So, I think they had bigger issues than mispronunciation. Anyway, the other problem with this explanation is that this mythological Chinese creature was not a flying monkey. The sigo or sigo or whatever it was is apparently a word used for several creatures in Chinese myth, including one that was like an amalgamation of a bunch of different creatures, and one of those did happen to be a monkey. But apparently people just keep erroneously using this word to describe a non-existent Chinese mythical flying monkey. And why would sci-fi care about correctly using Chinese myths? They make movies called Dragon Wasps and Ghost Quake and Nazis at the Center of the Earth. Anyway, the story of this movie 
thin as it is, is about this girl who is given a capuchin monkey as a graduation present from her father. And I will say that even though this movie was awful, I did kind of love that little monkey. I love all monkeys, but I especially love capuchins. So it was kind of nice that this cute little monkey got a lot of screen time. Anyway, at night, this tiny adorable monkey, which she has hilariously named Skippy for some reason, hulks out werewolf style and turns into a plastic CGI abomination and flies around town killing people. Oh, and did I mention that this town is Gale, Kansas? Get it? Kansas. Gale. Wink. Wizard of Oz. Wink, wink. There's also a secretary named Dorothy in the movie. Wink. The only people that even come close to being likable or sympathetic in this movie are this girl and her dad. And that's probably partially because they were some of the only semi-competent actors in this. The acting really ranged from passable to atrocious, with no one going beyond just decent. Everyone else in this movie is pretty much only here to be monkey chow. I could tell immediately at the beginning who they were setting up to be eaten, because right away there are these two gross old farmers making creepy comments about high school girls, and horrible teenage boys making filthy comments about their female classmates. And they were all pretty quickly munched by the monkeys. The rest of this movie involves these trackers from China who are hunting the last two monkeys in existence, or the last two flying monkeys in existence, and apparently you can't kill them with guns because ancient demons require ancient weapons for some reason. And also, shooting them makes them split into Hydra style because magic? I don't know. This dumpster fire didn't make a lick of sense. So these trackers manage to kill the last monkey in China, and then they have to go to America to find the last one in the world, which is Skippy, who was smuggled out of the country as an illegal pet. And Skippy also killed almost everyone involved in smuggling him to America at the beginning of the movie. So how he ended up in a pet shop is beyond me. You'd think he would have killed the last people in the train of people who are bringing him from China, but whatever. That gaping plot hole is the least of this movie's problems. Once they get to Gale, they find that Skippy has now multiplied into a massive swarm because everyone that he and his monkey spawn have been eating has had a gun. And like I said, for some mind-boggling reason, shooting them makes them multiply and, like, everyone has been shooting them before they get killed. It seems like this movie was also really leaning into some kind of a weird anti-gun message which is fine, I guess, but there are real-world reasons that people don't like guns, and substituting any of those, like, legitimate reasons for this ridiculous bullets make magic monkeys multiply nonsense really does nothing to help your cause. If there was even a cause. Who knows? Like I said, this plot was so dumb. By the end of the movie, almost everybody's dead except for the girl, her father, and her best friend, and Skippy comes home because he, like, loves her or something, and, like, their home is his nest or whatever bogus reason they gave. And then he attacks her father, and then they save the father, and then she looks the monkey in the eye and says, No more monkey business! Like, it's supposed to be some heroic, empowering line. And then she shoots him with a crossbow and he dies, and all the other monkeys start dropping out of the sky like dead bugs. The end. Literally the end. It's so stupid. It's so dumb. So, whatever. That was Flying Monkeys. I watched it, so you don't have to. This this video tells you as much as you need to know. And I really, I, I hope you don't watch it. It's not worth it. Unless you like purposely atrocious movies with laughable dialogue, terrible acting, and absolutely horrible special effects. If that's your thing, I guess consider this my recommendation. Knock yourself out, whatever. <laughs> that's it. Next time, my friend Mark Brown will be back. Last time we talked about Journey Back to Oz, which reminded me of another more recent Back to Oz film titled Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return. So we decided to talk about that one as well. And it's not the greatest movie either, but it was it was miles better than whatever this garbage pile was today. Anyway, 
That'll be next time, so we'll see you then for more Oztober with Mark Brown. <laughs>